This week on Pivot with Purpose. I don't like liars. I really don't. I am so transparent. And I might tell a lie like when the government asks me a quick question or like when the credit cards be like, what's your income? I might double it. There's certain types of liars that they just keep graduating. They will they lie on the hill. By the time I'm asking you a question, most likely I already know. I 100% know the, the answer. And I'm now I'm trying to see what you're going to say. I don't fuck with it. Do you know how much trouble you can get yourself in and other people in? Why like how much money you got? If you would have told the truth, <laughs> there would be no eviction. Like, just tell the fucking truth. Welcome back to the show. I always write this a whole intro before the show even starts. So there we're is. back. We're here. Hello. Let's get started. <laughs> Every <laughs> week we start with um, an Apple podcast or a YouTube review. Today is actually a message that I received from one of the reels on Instagram. So if you follow me on social, it's at Carla Bomeris. And um, our last episode, which since this is coming out on time, the mm -hmm. last episode was with, and then we got sex, Kristen and J-Rod. And they were so good. It was such a good episode. I love them. Um, so one milestone we did, if you're watching, thank you, because we just reached 4,000 subscribers. <laughs> you're welcome. Who is she? I did that. Be Simone who? Simmer down. <laughs> All the way. Well, Have several seats. This is you're gonna. This is the thing. But you, you did be Simone. I mean, yeah. You, so but yes, it, yes, I get it. Well, no, she already had seven hundred thousand subscribers. I will say that's why we used that. She was so already a lot of people looking. She's at you. been lit for a decade. Um, no, but honestly, every single one of those subscribers, thank you. I really appreciate. It. And it's like. If I don't appreciate when I had the thousand and the two and the three and now the four, because we just started video um, not even a year ago. So, or For a year real? ago. Huh? For real? Mm hmm A year. Ooh. So to have reached all that, to have already started monetizing it, it's just a big deal. It's only one year in. And although my brand might be bigger on a different side, this is me starting over on, on something else. So if you're also starting over, you can start over whenever. So anywho, with, and then we had sex. We posted, or I posted a clip um, that we created about them being uh, a blended family, the mm -hmm. Black Brady Bunch. And I received a message from Lynn on social media. She says, morning, boo. I watched this clip and imme immediately shed a tear because my youngest, four years old, is autistic. And he writes and recites the Russian alphabet, which their kids do as well. Um, she goes, and when I tell people, I think they think I'm lying. He did Spanish for a while, but he has moved on to Japanese and does oh, wow. math better than me on most days. And he's only four. So four. This kid is qualified more than me. <laughs> Way more. I would be intimidated. It makes sense as to why Kristen was like, I really don't like talking to them because they make you feel stupid. But I think like people have such a huge misconception about autism. Mm -hmm. I know you're autistic. I, That's I'm, what I'm saying. I told I'm, her that. I said, I feel a little autistic. I know I'm on you're the spectrum. Autistic. Okay. But I feel like there's such like a, a huge gap of understanding of what autism is. Like I have a friend mm -hmm. who her son is Ryland's age. He's he turned six this year. This little boy is so smart. When he when he gets into a thing like the ocean, right. he learns everything about the ocean. Everything. everything there is to know. Everything. Now he's into space. He knows everything about space. They lose the I was in accounting and I wanted to be podcasting, so I wouldn't learn everything about podcasting. And then yeah, just yeah. lost the business. But I couldn't concentrate on anything else. And then the loud noise. I'm telling you. I, but Stephanie always told, also told me, and I keep saying this, that a lot of autistic people have ADHD as well. And our symptoms are very similar. Yeah. But when she said that, I was like, one, thank you for sending the message. That way I know like mm -hmm. how it affects someone else. So whenever you guys have a message to send me, I definitely read them and I reply because it helps me with the content that I'm creating and, and knowing that you feel seen by seeing someone else. that They may not speak too much on their kids, on their mm -hmm. podcast and on their social, but that's who they are. And you can see that they're killing it. Like they record, and we talked about it, they record while their kids are sleeping. And they're like consistent at night, at home. as heck. What is my excuse? Well, I have a few. Let but me I count the ways. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we, we can all show up regardless. Yeah. But anyway, so thanks for sending that message in. Now today, it's a, I've been bulk recording. I've, I'm recording out till September. Look at you. Which is crazy. Who, who is, is she? she? <laughs> Don't know who she is. She's super popping. And being uh, dedicated. But. And medicated. 
And, and we're going to talk about it. <laughs> Medi- the medication, medicated. the medication helped with the dedication. It sure did. It does. Um, I wanted to just kind of shoot the shit and talk about some of the things that are happening currently because since everything is pre-recorded and they're really dope stories, I'm really leaning into bringing people on and guests that have amazing stories to tell of like when they pivoted, what they went through because it allows us to be seen at the end of the day. I got issues. I got a lot of issues. You do. And we, do, we all we, do. And we keep going. But I feel like some people use them as a crutch, right? And it's like, we can, but let's not. And maybe we can become the community that we're building here is for us to see like, hey, we can do it because my friends do it. And I can talk to her and we can reach and we can communicate and like yeah. feel inspired by someone else. Because you can go to like one conference and feel inspired. But if we're showing up every this single week silly. and I'm showing you different people all the time, not just four on a panel and then you get, you see me and it's like, not that I'm killing her or anything, but I am with <laughs> distractions and at times without medication because I'd be fighting myself. Um, I just want to continue to bring those stories to the forefront and we have a lot more coming up. Um, I know we have Linda <clears throat> next week. Oh, we yeah. have um, May, which is the, my first producer. We're going to talk about friendships. We have Jessica Rose from LA. If you guys yeah. follow Jessica Rose, we're gonna talk about mental health and how mothering just doesn't come natural to her. And she's just like, it's not my thing. She dealt with substance abuse and mm. a lot, like a lot of stuff. She's bipolar, but she's not medicated and doesn't want to take her medication. Shout out to the people that are bipolar and choose not to medicate because it's <laughs> not talked about. And, and we are just fine. Okay? <laughs> we are surviving. We are managing. Well, when I talk about medication, I don't know if I talked about it on an episode <clears> on <throat> social where the psychiatrist first met me and thought I was bipolar and gave me the wrong meds. And you I called almost, me so scared. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is You're going like, on? You're like, no, I know why you don't take your medication. This, that was bullshit. But yeah. like I said, I do understand why mm-hmm. they would give that med if you're manic. I've never been manic. I wish. So much fun. I've never had that much fun in my life. It is so much fun. <laughs> you People say when they're manic, sex is great. I oh, clearly it's so great. <laughs> have not had sex that good because I would be manic. <laughs> no, I would you be wouldn't. Like, I would be a proud no, BPD or whatever it's called. No, we've talked about this. You you don't do marathon sex. Ay, Dios mío, no. You do like sprint sex. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Shikari me. <laughs> <laughs> I got Shikari sex, baby. <laughs> 10 no. seconds, 10.7. You have to try it. You have to try it once. I ain't got time for that shit. You do. Literally. Time. Do like a Saturday. I would sleep. No. You're missing out. On sleep. On life. <laughs> no. Whatever. Well, <laughs> not missing out on it. But anywho, another one, two other people that are coming on. Two others. No. Kaylani. Kaylani. So, her episode's so good. I can't She was wait. here for it. Such a good episode. And then I am having um Erica, if you don't know who dun, Erica dun, is. Dun. I won't tell you the date because I don't know yet, but it'll be after this episode if you're listening. I am sitting down with the mother of my son's brother. If you put it together, you'll figure it out. I only Why have one son. Like that? <laughs> he has a brother and he got a mom. We sat down right here on this couch that we're sitting, right there where you sitting at. So that's gonna be a great episode. So um <laughs> you'll tune in for that one, I'm sure. All right. Well, we're gonna do some current things that are happening right now and how we relate to it and baby i don't relate to the current events but <laughs> um well how we could relate to them okay. there's some ways that i could relate to them your friend carly why is she my friend because she can't be mine <laughs> you're Did the she... one on dnd <laughs> i've never i don't even know how to use the dnd on my phone if wow okay so if you've been living under a rock, there was a woman Literally. by the name of Carly Russell who faked her entire uh, kidnapping. Mm-hmm. And we went for about two days. I used up my good prayers to the Lord. I could Everybody have been praying for prayed. a man. And I prayed for Carly. And Carly already had a man. So he cute too. He is. And he's a college on. graduate, HBCU graduate, fine as hell. I should. Come to Florida. I saw he had like a little bit of followers. And after this whole thing. Oh, he, he is, is popping. popping. <laughs> He is popping. His DMs are lit because he's oh, a yeah. cutie pie. And you know he's going through them. He's single. He's fucking his way through the pain. He said, don't you, I don't I don't associate with her. I don't talk to her no more. Come, Come here. suck this dick to make me feel better. And I'm sure wow. the girls are like, that was, that was very inappropriate. You I see, take that back. You have like sudden outbursts <laughs> of sexual repression. <laughs> Just randomly. It's like, 
I don't need sex, suck a dick. What? Huh? What? what? Where did that come from? <laughs> and by that, just saying that, I'm like, oof, I already did. Like, it felt like I did the work. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm doing fine, and I get propositioned all over the place. Somebody I don't just get propositioned it. her again. Again. Propositioned her again back for a threesome. Two different people. I don't know what she be out here doing. They don't do it when I'm around. Floating. Clearly, I am like Raid. I was floating. I, them away. <laughs> I was floating in the water. Okay, back to Carly. So Carly faked her disappearance and everybody mm-hmm. is in an uproar, mostly because we are already looking for attention when black women go missing, black or Hispanic women, women of color, period, women, right? Yeah. Um, but especially black women. Mm-hmm. And hers took off, right? Social media took over. We were like, we rallied together. Mm-hmm. It was everywhere. And this young lady, I'm not going to call her any names, but this young lady was chilling somewhere in a motel with a robe with a and gym. snacks. A Slim Jim. Some Cheetos. That's stupid. Twistlers. A manicure set. What? Why do you need to manicure your nails when you're missing? Okay. So although everybody is super mm-hmm. upset, I decided to bring up our research or make a, a quick Google search mm-hmm. and it's like what are the consequences for people to do this right because clearly none because people are still doing them so here's what i'm i'm so glad you said that that's why i do my research <laughs> well there is this woman this is not the first time nor probably will it be the last time whoever does this has mental health issues and i feel like america is the most mental health fucked up country so it's going to continue to happen uh, who, i don't who's think worse? I don't think that everyone who does this has mental health issues. I feel like some people do this Mm. for blatant, bratty, attention-seeking behavior. I think that's mental health. If it takes it this far. I feel like slashing his tires. I'm going to stick with what Charlemagne said. I don't think this has nothing to do with mental health. It's. I think it's some type of loca. No. No, it's not loca. No, it's. I don't think she's. Maybe she just wanted attention. She just wanted attention at that moment, and and she didn't think it it was going to get this big. big. You still got some type of issue for me. It, you got some type of issue. Some type of issue that some doctor has put a name to. Like, if you want too much attention or if you're an atten- attention seeker in that way, something wrong. Like, I don't know. It, it could be true. You might be right. Mm-hmm. But this has ha- happened before, and there are consequences to you um, faking your death. So we have a few women here. Sherry Papini. In 2016, uh, she was from California and a mom. She faked her own kidnapping. Mom. Mm-hmm. And it was exposed with the help of advanced DNA technology. And she was sentenced to a year and a half in prison. And she also had to pay back um, restitution. $310,000 in yeah. restitution. People's salary that they spent yes. working, finding you, that they could have spent doing something else. And then she's going to have that, the 18 months in prison, followed by 36 months of super, supervised released. So she's going to have the a CO for sure. Um... So there are consequences to that. She did say something about, I'm so sorry to the many people I have suffered because of me. No. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So Don't this say was, sorry now. Stand by it. Right. Yeah, no. Right. She said, um, when when they found her, she said that it was some Hispanic men that had taken her. Mm-hmm. That's messed up. Hispanic captors. Right. She also received more than $30,000 from the state and victim cons- compensation funds. So she had to give that back. Yeah. Hot mess. Wait, victim compensation. What is this? What is this victim compensation? I didn't know, but how can I get some? I, no feel, I have been the victim. I've been a victim of a lot. We've been a victim of a lot. We should, technically, we should be getting paid. I want compensation. <laughs> We're not. <laughs> at all. Ridiculous. All right. Well, there was another woman. This woman was 23 years old, Chloe Stein, and she was uh, from Pennsylvania. <clears throat> she faked her own abduction as well. You're not going to believe for what? She's 23. What do you mm-hmm. think for what? Something with a boyfriend because emotional women do crazy shit. This one. She wanted to hide the fact that she dropped out of college, girl. Yeah. Yeah. So she was charged with four misdemeanors, false alarm to a public safety agent, falsely reporting an offense that didn't occur, obstruction of administration of law, and disorderly conduct. So that's another one. Her boyfriend tried to contact her. Nothing happened, the police said. So she didn't even tell him. Um, the whole family did a missing person declaration, and she was a young white girl, so you know they was looking for her. They were looking for her. Well, where did big she time. go? I have no idea where she went. People would find me. I'd be uh, at Target, Starbucks. The I'd be everywhere. I can't be with my kids sometimes. So let me see. It says a police station. They pulled. Um, they found her driving. I guess. Or. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> wait, she was hiding in her house? Yeah, no, wait, hold dumb. on. That is so dumb. So you put yourself on punishment. Tens of thousands of dollars in surge. What? And then... You punish yourself. The case unraveled when a tip came in on a, on a Tuesday night that she was actually at home about 30 minutes southeast of Pittsburgh. They found her safe inside and she was taken for questioning. Excuse me? You didn't even do it the right way. She told the police that she was pulled over and abducted by an unknown male and post as a police that posed as a police officer. And that he had a firearm that she was blindfolded. Listen, the stories they come up with. This is the thing. They get so elaborate, it makes you wonder, like, what? I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. You got 10,000, you were abducted by 10,000 men on boats? How did that happen? You own 77 boats? Ma'am, you live in Oklahoma. <laughs> There's not a water body of water in There's sight. There's not? Where's Oklahoma? In the center of the United States. Oh. They probably got, like, maybe a lake and river or something the I don't worst know. lies the absolute worst lies now there is quinn gray 37 years old from ponte Vedra. she went missing and she demanded fifty thousand dollars from her own family or she would be killed she demanded it or her captors her captors so she was married she was having an affair <gasps> she wanted to be with her boyfriend so her and her boyfriend did this whole thing why don't people just break up right 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 so common he was also common. he pled guilty um and had to pay forty three thousand dollars. The boyfriend, yes. Oh, because the boyfriend was in on year. it. Yep, but not the husband. And then she pleaded no contest, and she was she got seven years probation and paid the other half of the forty three thousand dollars because she was never Hold captured. On. He got six years. Uh, probation. Oh, and she I got know, seven. I know he was punching the air. He must have been like, you know, your family didn't over have this some money. pussy. Listen, I've heard some stories recently. No. Pussy is not that serious. And okay? this, it's not. It's this not. all leads me to like why liars are so dangerous. I have this despise. <clears throat> is that the word? Uh, I disdain. despise. I despise. I dis okay, I despise liars. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I don't like liars. I really don't. I am so transparent. And I might tell a lie like when the government asks me a quick question or like when the credit cards be like, what's your income? I might double it. So it would give me a higher credit limit. <laughs> That's the kind of You're moving I on faith. <laughs> because realistically. Thank you. The Lord shall provide. Really? They can still deny you. They could. But. And I'm going to pay it back. You're moving on faith. I'm going to pay back. So that, those are some lies that I've said before, right? But let me tell you something. Liars are. There's certain types of liars that they just keep graduating. They will the lie on the hill. It doesn't matter, mm -hmm. which is why I tell my kids, especially my daughter, when she would lie, it's like, I don't fuck with it. Oh, I'm, I'm on that road now with Rylan. Do you know how much trouble you can get yourself in and other people in? Prime example, Carly. Mm -hmm. This is now affecting the boyfriend, the mom, the dad. That mom and dad went on the Today Show. In, on prime time. Prime time. Crying. Tears. Real fat que tears. Que bochorno. Que do you Saying know? that you were fighting for your life. What would a Puerto Rican mother do? Beat the shit it, out of you. No, I'm going to come back on call USA the camera Today. <laughs> I'm going you. back to USA Today. I'm going to beat your ass in front of everybody. Because if you embarrass me publicly, I'm going to, we're going to talk about I'm this gonna, publicly. I'm going to beat you publicly. Publicly. Yeah. Those parents, here's the thing. People are like, oh, they must have been in on it. Bro, no. I can't even imagine. Even, I don't care how upset my daughter is at me. If she goes missing. Mm -hmm. For five hours that nobody knows officially she's missing. You're a parent. Two year, I mean, two days. That relief when the, my baby comes home, I don't care if she's 30, 40, 50, however old. Mm -hmm. When you come home, I am like relieved. Anything you tell me, I'm going to believe. Mm -hmm. Unless you was a liar growing up, Carly. <laughs> I don't know. But even then, even then, the way this took off. And the, the, the way stuff is happening now, you just start thinking about a million anything, things. Anything. So lies don't only affect you. They affect those people around you. Mm -hmm. And then when you're such a strong liar that you take Oof. this to the fucking grave and we're all looking at you like, bro, we know you're lying. We know you're lying. Why are you lying about the businesses you got? Why are you lying how much money you got? If you would have told the truth, <laughs> there would be no eviction. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, just tell the fucking truth truth i have this thing and i tell this to i tell this to my daughter 
I tell this to people that I deal with. By the time I'm asking you a question, most likely I already know. I 100% know the, the answer, and I'm now I'm trying to see what you're going to say. But even then, there's sometimes that we ask people questions about knowing anything, and they just flat out make up a whole story and a whole lie. No blinking. Bold face. And that's scary. Siri. That's scary. You are a psychopath. You yeah. are a serial killer. Like, I just don't fuck with liars I can't at trust. All. Yeah. No, it just, it makes no sense. And I'm such a transparent person. Right. To a fault, right? To a serious fault that I'm like, damn, did I say too much? And that, like I said, it, it can be used against me sometimes. But liars, it's just like, you're, you're never you. When do you know when to be you? You, you don't even know who you are. So I, because you have to start to believe those lies. I'm the same way. Like I'm somebody who I don't lie, only because I can't keep up the lie. It's so hard. I mean, I'm gonna lie. I'm gonna forget. But like something that's gonna be like, I can't even lie to Rylan sometimes because she will check me. She's she's done it before too. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to Carla's and I'm not going to Carla's. <laughs> and then she'll be like, we go to your house and she'll be like, oh. When you were with my mom, you're like, I wasn't with your mom. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> damn, Carla, you have one job. I bet. I can't even lie to my six-year-old because but, I can't keep it up. Mm. So the fact that somebody has to, like, keep a lie, and then you got to remember what you said to this person. You got to remember what you said to this one. You got to remember what you – don't let these three people get in the same room because they're going to fact check each other some way, somehow. Right. Well, I will say. That doesn't scare you? Like, I have lied. Oh. I'm going to say I, I, I don't mm. like lying. And I'm – but – I have lied. Like, I remember I had sex with this guy and I lied. To him or to other people? To someone else about having sex. And I was like, I did not. So, I've, it sounds I would weird. Never. I've never had to lie to someone Shit, like that. I lied. Because It wasn't no a one, boyfriend. I just lied. I didn't want somebody to know that. No I one's ever asked me, like, oh, did you sleep with this person? Like, that's never come I up. I just feel like when I lied about it, I feel like that person didn't need to know. And it wasn't even a significant other. It was just like, I don't need to tell you. <clears throat> So no, I would never. Actually, I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> I don't. I'm not. Actually, a lot of embarrassed. Oh, I'm thinking about it now. Oh, I have sex with him. I ew. I you never have somebody you want to erase. Actually, I'm not. Is it say it again? Lie. You what? You never want someone you just want to erase. Like have someone that you like <clears throat> from your past that you've like smashed. Yeah. Yeah. There's two people. Yeah, I can think this one. This one. There's this two one. People. I wish I never. Oof. Why did uh. I do that? But no one would ever believe that I ever had sex with him, so it's fine. If I lie, no one is going to question it. Like, there's no way I would have sex with him. There's no way. No, my thing is not that nobody would. The crazy thing is, is, like, stuff has happened to me. And if I say, if it wasn't because I show you prime examples of stuff, you wouldn't <laughs> believe it. No. Like, some of the stuff that has happened to me and stuff like that. Like, if I didn't have screenshots or if you weren't on the phone, people would be like, Ain't no fucking way. That's the same. Like when I get certain emails with cops show up at the house, it's like, unless you have access to my cameras, you won't believe it. You'd be like, yeah. you're doing the most. You're in the Bahamas and the cops are at your house. Yeah, right. Right. Um, <laughs> but there's also, now that we're talking about like men and stuff like that, <clears throat> we've been watching, I was talking to Wendy and we were talking about how there's all these podcasts that talk about high value men and they always equate high value men to money. Yeah. And- or security, financial security. Why <clears throat> high value men does not equate money and money doesn't. only. High value men, what we need to be speaking on is the fact that high value men have extremely high morals. Mm -hmm. Integrity. Leadership, impeccable leadership, values, values that they really stand by, not that they just make a couple Instagram posts or share a couple stories. Like actual morals actual that are instilled in them. morals and values. Faith. They have to believe in something mm -hmm. bigger than them. Just do that. Bigger the, than them. Mm, they're, they're not the, the biggest. They're not the God. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's one of the biggest things for respect. me. Like, respect. No, like, just... It's an, discipline. Something as small like respect, discipline... And actually, discipline is not small. Discipline is huge. It takes a lot. And it's not discipline in one thing. Oh, he works out all the time mm -mm. and he's got a nice body. No, but what is happening with his finances? What is happening? Does he really go to church? You know what I'm saying? Does, does he eat healthy all the time? Does he respect other people around him? Does he show up yeah. where he's supposed to show up all over his house? And this is not just for men. It's also for women. But it was specifically I was watching. Um, we were talking about the men that they're always like it equates to money. But there's one thing about it all. 
That is that if this is a man that has great morals, leadership, values, um, faith, discipline, that man ain't broke. No. That man will never be broke. Even if for a moment <clears throat> the pockets aren't where they're supposed to be. He will still make it. They're there. Yeah. He it's will about still make to get there's a breakthrough, but he's not living under a bridge. A man like this, someone's taking them in. They're like, we're going to help you. We're going to give you the job. We're going to give you the salary. We're going to give you the advance. That's, and this is also women. High yeah. value women, we think is <clears throat> want us, but, 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 women that make a bunch of money or that they, they have all these. That's not what it is. I high value women is also one with morals that can be a leader and learn how to be a leader with someone else at the same time. It's like you lead here, I lead here, and not have ego. Oh, that biggest thing is the ego. Ego is yeah, a killer. I, I, I think I'm a huge believer that a man doesn't have to make the biggest amount. Like all the men that I've ever dealt with, with the exception of two, mm -hmm. make more money than me. Two people have made way more money than me. But at the same time, just because they make more money doesn't mean that they're amazing. No. They, they've worked really hard for their money. Right. They are really good men. But then I've also dealt with really good men that make less money than me. But guess what? Like, I've never ever had to deal with, I mean, I'm being like petty now. Like, I've never had, I don't got to worry about throwing the trash out. I don't got to worry mm -hmm. about making breakfast. I don't got to worry sure. about putting laundry in the, I don't got, I don't got to ask you like, yo, can you clean the kitchen since I cooked? It's just like they know it's in them to just help out. And it and, takes two people. And honestly, it, not everybody. Uh, <clears throat> one thing that I really don't like about social media right now is the fact that everybody has to be so rich, right? It's like no. the yachts and the expensive cars That's and the, the big 1%. houses. Literally. It's the 1%. Like, <laughs> I think that people, I live in my same house. Yeah. Somebody was messaging, message, I'll have to go look for it. And one of those like messages, it's like, well, I thought your house would be nicer. What? You have a nice house. Apparently, I need to be in one of those houses ha to have a balcony on the outside. Do they not know your house is worth a lot of money <laughs> because of the location? But I think that sometimes we get so caught up. It's like, what does the house look like? Does it have the perfect molding and the big kitchen? Did they have a house? And the, probably not. Because to say something like that, I, I ain't worried about nobody else's house because I have mine. But at the same That's time, terrible. I think we live in this in the social media space where we think that success or a good person has all these pretty shiny things and that's not it i remember being very happy working a regular nine to five the boyfriend that i had he also ended up robbing me but he was a bar back <clears throat> maybe not a good example um because he did rob me <laughs> damn <laughs> he really robbed me um but just like two regular jobs right everybody make fifty thousand a hundred thousand we live good the mortgage is paid for is a good 1500 you know what i'm saying we have food we have vacations we have nice cars bro people are okay with that yeah i mean they actually enjoy it i think people need to learn how to feel happy in their own success but that, it's hard with social it oh 100 is hard you need to you need to be mentally strong yeah to do that i I'm happy you have to now. like yourself. Like, I don't have a house. I'm scared to buy a house. I don't feel like me by myself, it. I can have a house right now. I'm like, ooh, that's a lot of- Maybe a condo, a townhouse. That's a lot of- I'm living in an apartment. You know how scared I was to move out by myself. And guess what? I was what? terrified. I haven't missed a month. And I still have You've been out, over. hanging out? How? Outside. How? You be going on water parks, and you got to take care of you and plus one. And then sometimes plus other- We ain't going to talk about it. You be want to take care of whole families. But- <laughs> Hey, that is your prerogative. No, but I'm saying <laughs> you like got I, it I had to, there was a time where I didn't feel happy because I didn't feel like I was where I was supposed to be. I, when I graduated high school, I told my, my parents, my mom was so hard on me for school. Like, I mean, I think that, AP, that's a cultural thing. AP, you have to get straight A's. When I graduated high school, I didn't tell none of my friends that I graduated with my associate's degree. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. But I had to do AP, I had to do uh, early college, whatever that's right. called, because I didn't have no more classes. To, I took eight science classes. <laughs> eight. That's why you, whenever I call you for poison control, you know what to say. So I, I had to like keep going, keep going, keep going. And I was, by the time I graduated, I was burnt out. So I told my mom, I said, you wanted a degree? Here's two. I'm taking a break. Right. And all I did was work, work, work. And I built up my career. And then I decided to go back to college. By myself, I paid for it out of pocket. I busted my butt, and I remember That's too much school. when Ooh. I was supposed to, when I took my finals, I missed it by two points. 
two points and I didn't pass the first time. Two points. When I tell you, I felt like the utter most failure because all this money that I put in, I was living right. off Red Bull and Kind Bars. I know. I just had a Kind Bar. I worked I three jobs. I had a full-time job and two part-time jobs. And I was yeah, going to school yeah. full-time. And I felt like the biggest failure. When school it, was never... I, and it, I, here's the thing. So you're right. Your parents put a lot of pressure on you about school. Mm -hmm. My dad didn't. My mom did. It mm -hmm. was like, you need to go to school. And I think also projection yeah. of like where she was in her life, like just like a housewife. Like as a woman, you need to have your own education, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And my dad's like, fuck school. Fuck a 401k. Invest your own money. Start your own business. Let's go. And I still had jobs because I had a daughter that I had to take care of. Yeah. But if I would have told my dad, hey, I want to just do full-time entrepreneur, he would have taken care of me and her while we figured it out. Right. And once I got the job, I've never had a 401k. Because he was always like, do not. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't let somebody else get involved with your money. You start your business. You invest in yourself. And that's what I've been doing essentially ever since. I've never had a 401k. Yeah. I'm not crazy about forcing my kid to like do stuff. Like, mm -hmm. you have to do this. I'll, I'll let her venture out and do stuff. But there's some times that she's like, I want to be a... She told me one time she wanted to be one of those sidewalk artists. What? Mm -hmm. They're out there dressed like uh, mm -hmm. dolphins right now. You saw them? And I told her, I said, a what? <laughs> She's like, you know, like those artists that draw like these really pretty pictures? You know pictures? what? No. And I said, you, you I, could do that. I'm I'm taking her with me. While mm -hmm. you go to medical school. No. Mm -hmm. that, that'll Absolutely be your release. Not. That'll be your mental release. That's whack. I want her to have security. I don't want her. Security doesn't come from a degree, though. It doesn't. But I don't want her to think at six that we just going to be a hippie. Because I can't. I don't think that's a My hippie. anxiety won't let no. me. No. The way that it is right now, she can go to school for art as well. She can get a degree in art. She can be an art teacher. I'm telling her. I don't care. You can tell her. I'm telling her. Mm -hmm. She's you gonna go to. She's gonna get a, a, a scholarship for degree. it. She's gonna get a scholarship for her art school, and mm -hmm. she's gonna go have everything paid. She's for. She's gonna be the nurse to entertain the kids. No. Yeah. They have to be Look, this is where trauma comes in. That's the not traumatic. That is so traumatic. I'm not pushing this on Look, her. Look, you just talked about your mom and how much pressure she had I on didn't, you. But I'm not putting that pressure on her. Oh no! I'm giving her options. She said she wanted to paint. She also says she didn't like chicken and she eats chicken nuggets. <laughs> I take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> let her be her. I don't, take it with a grain of salt. Okay? Let her be her. We don't want her to be a nurse and then end up being one of those mean nurses because my mom made me do this. Bah! And like slap the no, juice out of somebody's hand. I'm not gonna look. Somebody I, takes a shit. She's like, you can stay there in that shit because I'm. Do only you know what I wanted to be when I want when I was little? Oh. Nobody could tell me nothing. I wanted to be a pediatrician. I wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to. Be, I still want to be in the medical field. I said if I ever win the lotto, I'm going back to nursing yeah, school. Yeah, no, she's not. I'm going back to nursing. We talked school. about. Then we have a I'm whole going, car ride about this. You're I'm not going, going back to nursing she's school. Lying. I'm not. You're not gonna win a billion dollars and go to nursing school. You give me the billion and watch me. I got you. <laughs> Watch me. No, you're no, I don't got you. I'm like giving you a billion dollars. <laughs> but I also know you're not gonna go to nursing school. I you're know. gonna you're gonna pay for like we talked about it. You win a billion dollars, you're not going to medical school. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pay for a hundred or a thousand women or men that want to be and they don't have the means to do it. And instead of you being one nurse taking care of one shitty patient, you're gonna have a thousand nurses all over the country taking care of people. When you have a but billion I dollars, do it. No, you don't. Not when you're a billionaire. Right now you want to. Do you see how well I administer shots? When you're a billionaire, you're going to be taking shots of tequila with your tits out in Italy. I'm not That is it. <laughs> like, you're not going to be doing that. Stop. That's one thing. We have to seriously be realistic. Bro, first of all, I don't even know how many zeros are in a billion. I don't. So the fact four. that I don't... Like four sets. Four, so that's 12? I think so. That's a lot of zeros. My account, it might... No. It's it's that's not how it works. We don't even know what a a billion dollars is. So much money Ooh, my that you can hard. do. Those billionaires killed themselves because they had so much money. Literally, they went mm. underwater because so much money buys you literally everything. So I think the people that end up like doing well, hey, you're not going to nursing school, but you're going to because I know that you love what yeah. nurses do and what it means. You're gonna make sure to make an impact with that. We can't think about what we would do with our pockets today. What we feel today, we ain't gonna feel that shit with a billion dollars. I'll tell you right now, I don't even have a million. And I think very different today <laughs> than I did three years ago. Okay? When yeah. we, I would've went to, to the water park and there was no seating, we were gonna figure it out. Today? Carla doesn't figure it out. I'm not figuring Carla out shit. Carla figures out who to pay to get who the cabana. Who am I paying <laughs> to get that cabana and who am I paying to get the fuck out of the cabana so I can get in there. 
Yeah, I don't like it. Totally different. That's a three hundred dollar cabana. Like now, today, I think very different. It's like a couple years back, three hundred dollar cabana. I would have said suck my dick. But right now, where I am right now, I'm in a position where I'm like, I'm literally having fun. I can see you going to. I'm having fun now because there was a time that I couldn't do this. What if you could do like online nursing school while you're working? You can't do online. You have mm -hmm. to eventually go into the... Mm -hmm. Why am I going to work? I got a million. A billion. I'm not working. Well, no, I'm saying right now, right now while you're working. And oh, you go to so medical I, school and afford it. Everybody has... There's, there's scholarships. There's grants. If I can take out a loan for a car, I can take out a loan for education, realistically. Or maybe um, to live off of while you're in school. Right. I've thought about it a lot. And I just... I don't have the capacity to do that. Nursing school is really, really hard. It's not easy. Rylan's still little. And Rylan is still little, and she still needs my attention. A lot of Maybe once she she's in high so school, much. maybe yeah. it's something so that I can go back to. So at 14 is when I took the leap. Ayana yeah. was 14, and I think by that time you can cook for yourself. I can leave you at home for a couple hours yeah. while I go do what I have to do. Right. So I think 14, 14 15 we'll, is a good we'll age. We'll circle back. And if there's any millionaires out there that want to throw away their money, like Absolutely. my cash app is just pales and Carla's. Carla Ramirez. We it will... over. I'll send her 80%. I'm keeping 20. Wait, what? If somebody sends me the money for you, I got to keep 20%. Okay. It's management okay. fee. Okay. Bet. Send it to me. I'll send it to her. Or you can cut the middleman. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> another thing that I wanted to talk about um, was a medicated Molly. Is I like here. I I think it's so funny. I'm here. I am medicated. I saw the psychiatrist. He medicated me with the wrong medication. Um, <laughs> with my medication. <laughs> yes. He gave me bipolar medication. Uh, what was the name of it? Oh, Ter God. No. Ter uh, the Theraflu. Tra tap Topamax. Oh, top to no, I think it's Topamax. Oh, that's the Brit. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it was. It was called Topamax. If you're on it, you have, I think it's for seizures, Good bipolar, job. different things. That medication, I was taking it for three days, and I almost <laughs> lost my... No, I did lose my shit, actually. <laughs> I called the doctor's office. I went off on them. Like, it was really tough. I think I actually talked about this with May or Jessica, because by that time, I was already on my Yeah. Um, but it's now been almost a month mm -hmm. that I've been on it. Um, I'm still struggling with a few things. My brain still doesn't want me to take it every day. My body, my subconscious, my Your ego, possibly. You yes. <laughs> My brain's like, please, we can't stop thinking about a hundred things. And my, then I'm like, also, I'm strong enough. I got this. I've been doing this. Look how far I've gotten. But then again, <laughs> look how far I've gotten. Yeah. And I, it's, I hit a wall every time mm -hmm. because I have to understand that I have a neurodi neurodivergent brain and it processes things very different. And I am very smart. Doot, doot, my own horn. But when I can't focus... And when I can't have one thought without jumping on to the next, when you feel stuck, I'm stuck. I can't mm -hmm. do anything and I can't progress in mm -hmm. life. So I've been taking it more times than not. So I would say out of the last, it hasn't been 30 days, but it's about to be. The last 30 days, I took it at least 20. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot. That's not bad. No, not at all. I think I'm doing, I, I didn't think I would do this is because when I took Adderall before and it was just a regular tablet. Yeah. It's like a punch and it made me, I just didn't like the way it made me feel the drops didn't like it at all and the headaches this is the extended release and i am good it's like a little bit at a time throughout the day chilling mm. um i so think all together like mental health medication is really hard for people to be consistent with it <sighs> it's really hard because then you start feeling good and you're like i don't need it i feel great i'm good i was I so productive yesterday i want to do it again today that's like mine mm -hmm. like my medication or whatever i'm like but why do you want to stop being happy well i feel so happy and high right now why do i want right. to do that but it's yourself. like, right, but then it's like after the highs, you get the super lows. So it's like, oh, got to take the medicine. And like every doctor, you can't do it when you need it. Right. You have so, to be well, I can do it when I, he told me I don't have to take Yours it. Yours is day. different. Yeah. Mine's, so, ADHD, you have trouble paying attention, um, controlling impulsive <laughs> behaviors, like shout things out <laughs> for no reason. Like it's an impulsive behavior, right? Or usually that's what it is. Like a thought comes in and it's like these intrusive thoughts just go out. Word out. Um, overly active at times. Um, so it can't be cured, but it can be managed. And it's so much better if you get diagnosed as a child than waiting, as a, to, that waiting to be an adult. But the medication is working. I would say the only thing is I'm making sure that I eat something, especially in the mornings when I take it. I take it at 5.30 a.m. Um, and then my anxiety. 
gone. has been, I wouldn't say gone because there are times that I still get it. And he told me that it could be nowhere to where it used to be. Because your brain is not like over on overdrive. Oh my god! So your anxiety is not so I heightened. I can think, like I'm literally sitting here with you and it's crazy because usually while I'm recording, I'm thinking about what Viv is doing over there with the camera. I'm thinking about, okay, the camera still have battery. Who's <laughs> out there? Because I actually have heard voices, but I didn't focus or fixate on those voices out yeah. there. I would have been thinking about song. I've actually been listening to you. Oh, thanks. I, okay. <laughs> Good job. No, I can listen. I can focus. Now, the downside to it is sometimes I go in the rabbit hole of scrolling on social media and I focus on that and I'm very focused. Nothing else is bothering me. No other intrusive thoughts. So I can spend hours yeah. just scrolling. So I have to be very intentional with my schedule and knowing what I'm doing so I can stay on task. Yeah. But if you have been struggling with ADHD, um, I would say for me, this worked. I don't know what it, the other pills might work for you. There are other ADHD medications, but for me, Adderall has done it. I still have not started working out, which I know that will immensely help me as well. Um, but I am eating better. Spring less, 2024. We can come back. Spring 2024. No, I need, I'm paying for this shit. Won't well, stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said, I got to go in person to quit, to end it. So if I go in person, I might as well go work out. And then I work out, and then I don't come back for another three months. Whatever. That's besides the point. But I am medicated. Um, I'm going to continue. I guess kind of journaling for you and for myself as well, like how I'm feeling, how I'm doing with it. I haven't had any crazy side effects. I sleep because I take it so early. I do sleep. And there, I've, been, I've taken a few gummies here and there. I've smoked here and there, and nothing has happened. So... We're doing a okay, and I am gonna stop <laughs> fighting myself because it is really hard to take the med every single day. I can't even oh, take birth control. Oh, I take that one every day. But you you can take meds on like on a regular because you take the other medication too, and you take it daily, no? Yeah. I know. I forget. I don't. I don't. So me and mental health medication, we've been through a journey. Like I didn't get diagnosed with bipolar till I was, till my postpartum time, mm. postpartum period. So before that, I was I was prescribed like Zoloft. Okay. And I didn't like how it made me feel. That, isn't that to make you feel better, like happier? It's it's supposed to help with depression, so it's yeah, supposed yeah. to like bring up your mood. I didn't like how it made me feel. Mm. It, I, different people have different side effects from medication, right. which is where you have to like play with medicine. When it and also when it comes to mental health medication, it's affected by weight gain, weight loss. Yes. And the milligrams they give you has to do with your height have to do and with weight. Your height, weight, right? So there's been times that, like, man, this is the only reason why I would have another child. The only reason. <sighs> After I had Rylan, I felt so good about my body. I weighed about thirty pounds less than before I got pregnant. Wow. My hair thriving down to my waist. <laughs> my nails, my skin. I felt so good. And that's kind of like Kiki, right? Because so you have PCOS good. and Kiki. Oh my God, it's the it same was thing. Amazing. Everything is like, she looks so good. My body was great. My mental was great. And it lasted about three months. Oh shit. After the three months, it just went completely downhill. So you already had bipolar disorder by then? It, my bipolar disorder is something that was an after effect of everything compressed that happened. So tra from a traumatic event. Yes. So y you can get bipolar disorder from a traumatic event. Yes, because it's your body is made to protect you. Mm. Your body doesn't want the body doesn't want to die. Wow. The body doesn't want to die and feel pain and stuff like that, which is why it tells you, hey, go to the doctor. You feel pain. Hey, you have a fever. Take medicine. So when with all this stuff that happened, like all the trauma that happened, my brain was like, yo, we can't keep feeling like it this. We got to shoot up. Yeah. In your mid-20s. You got it. It's in your mid-20s. You got to shoot up. You got. We got to get happy. We can't feel like this. So your brain's like, let's get Spice high. Up. So then you can only be so high and your brain's like, yo, the body's like, yo, we can't be this high. We need to simmer down. So then you have a low. And then that's when you you, you cycle up mm. and down till you get back to the middle. And now there's no way of getting rid of it. No. Because the brain already went that high so it can still mm -hmm. go that high. There's it, no cap. And that's the thing with your brain. Once your brain is broken, you can't fix it. You can only treat it. Jesus. And that's where you did with medication and stuff like that. Oh, well, we are medicated. Well, I, are you not taking your medicine at all? Oh, we're talking about you. <laughs> Deflection and a half. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Won't go there. I'll take it as no. I take, I take my medication that I'm supposed to take. 
birth control is not medication. That one's a big one. <laughs> that is <laughs> not medication. She out here just not right. getting pregnant. <laughs> Not pr- not contributing to the deficit in the the tax bracket or whatever it is. You're right. Um, well, there was one <laughs> more thing that happened uh, recently, and this is um, I've been able to focus on it because of the medication. <laughs> <laughs> There's a woman, um, and I think this is old because I saw it a long time ago. It's not old. It happened last week. <laughs> this video's been out for a while. Oh, okay. I was like, yeah, hey. I saw this video a long time ago. So there's a woman that went on online. She is a trans woman, mm-hmm. and she's speaking on womanhood. And this is what she said: If you again have been living under a rock, but we're gonna t- I'm just we're gonna talk about something completely different when it comes to this. When the transphobia just comes out, the audacity and just the 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 arrogance for cis women to believe that they own periods, that they own womanhood, you don't. Okay, you don't own periods. You don't own womanhood. You experience both. And both are different for every person. But as a cis woman, it doesn't belong to you. So you can't gatekeep it. Like, hello? I, okay. I I volunteer as tribute to give up my period. Okay, here's what I'm going to (laughs) say. I won't even attack the trans community because this bitch right here Mm -hmm. is just a human with mental issues. She ain't all the way there. She missing some stuff. Then that I don't think that's anything to do with her being trans or anything else. She's just stupid. You know what they say: if you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. Right. So. So. She, and she is sticking by. You know how we yeah. talk about people that just like die mm-hmm. on that cross, and she wants to die on that cross, baby. We don't want. I periods. am supposed to get my period <laughs> on Friday, according to Flo, on the phone. Oh yeah, we're on the same. Cycle. I am PMSing. Um, if I could give you the feeling that I'm feeling right now, right? I would. I don't want. But then it's like if we are, uh, we're not gatekeeping this. I pro- we have been trying everything. We have tried everything to like see how can we get rid of them. <laughs> yeah. How can we give them to someone else? Skip your. your there are week people on that are like birth take control. my. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> So like, have it. You know what? I'm hanging out this week. Let's push this to next month. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Yeah. We try to find ways. We don't want childbearing. It. You know what I would give to be able to still have my children, but have the daddy have them, or like them hatch on a little egg. Ah, even little. That would be, be so, so cute. cute to like hatch. Like, pew, pew, pew. like the the cabbage patch. Yes. <laughs> my goodness, I would love for some to have come out of an egg. Technically, he did. But <laughs> the egg hatched in the wrong place. That was, yeah. It still hatched inside of me. Yeah. Or was the egg would have hatched outside. We're no, not, so we're not again, this. I'm not trans. But I did also look some things up. And there, and this is when again I truly believe that we all have people that are mentally ill, that are just weird, that mm-hmm. are just out there that want attention. That's what I'm saying, like the whole attention thing. Yeah. Because there was a trans woman who is suing a gynecologist for refusing to treat her hmm? because now she's a woman. Wait. So she Hold on. Mhm. We need more we need more information. How is he supposed to treat her because she's a woman. I don't know if men have seen a speculum. <laughs> but where is this supposed to go? Number Listen. 1. So apparently when they take the hormones, they have some side effects kind of like very similar to PMS. Let's park that there. Okay. This one said that the doctor denied her because you're not a biological woman. I have nothing to check. Right. That is not what I do. Now, absolutely, you could be a woman all day. Yeah. Go be, but you still have a urethra. Do we have urethras? We do. Okay. A male urethra. They have a also, there was another one that she said she was having like spasms or whatever in like the new vaginal hole that they created. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to see a gynecologist. The gynecologist doesn't study the, the surgical. The new, the new route. The, the, the new route. The new hole. It's, a, it's different. It's, it's a different a, class. It's a, it's a tad bit different. So you have to go to the doctor that deals with that hole. Probably the doctor that gave you the hole. Boom. That would have been a great place to start. Yeah. You know? But my gynec... I, I can't go to a urologist. Yes, no. I can. I think I can go to a urologist. I have a urethra. I can't go to a penis doctor and tell him, come check out this dick, and then show him my clip. 
It's just not gonna work like that. I and, and you're upset about it. So again, I don't think this is a trans thing. I think this is a crazy person thing. <laughs> that you're just not all the way there at all. But one person that I do really <laughs> enjoy speaking. Did I say something wrong? I'm just confused because okay, the <clears throat> the old the gynecologist. If you're having side effects of the hormones, and it has to do with your breast. And there's something wrong with your breast. Guess what that gynecologist is going to refer breasts. you to? An oncologist. <laughs> That's Another cancer, person. Though. Right. A gynecologist oh, is not going right, to check right. you for cancer. You're right. You're they're going to do the exam. And right. then once it's confirmed, they're like, you know what? You got to go here. Right. So if that's what their person is concerned for, okay, I'll treat you for that. Whatever. But if you want me to go under the hood, <laughs> I can't. It's the wrong hood. I can't do that. Like, you know the just, cars that have the the... Under the hood is the front. Other cars, the other hood the is back. in the back. Yeah. You have the wrong. It's it. It's just. I can't. It's confusing. And I feel like this puts people who have no issues with trans people, who have no issues with any of that. It's just medical opinion that's black and white. That's it. I can't. I can't tell a doctor, hey, I think my balls are stuck and I have no balls. <laughs> He's going to send me to the crazy, no, the crazy really floor. Is. He's going to, because he's going to be like, this person doesn't have balls, but she's so adamant that there's this balls. is not something that I can help with. They're going to put you in another floor. I don't understand what the problem is. Like you need to go to the There's appropriate doctor, doctor for the appropriate thing. And then get it back working right or whatever you're feeling. And then you can go and live your life as a woman. We don't like going to the gynecologist. At all. It is the most awkward situation for is, you to get on that table and they're like, come on. We <laughs> never we never sit close enough to the edge. We never do it. And I swear I feel my ass hanging out. You feel my like you're going to fall. <laughs> my ass is tooted at the end of that damn and table. It's about come closer. Come closer. Do you want me to put it on your face? Like, come, come closer. <laughs> we don't like that. And then but when they're, they're in there, they're like, so what's yeah, going on for the weekend? No. I, it's on? so cute that you're doing that because then the speculum is the size of this mic right here. <laughs> and they not only put that bad boy in. They crank it. They, <laughs> And all you hear is, <laughs> and bro, their stuff hurts. And it then does. they stick long Q-tips in there, and, and they, they scrape. scrape. <laughs> Do you, yo? I've listen, seen a guy. I've never seen your vagina, but from your experience, I feel My, like you are. You have one because you get it. Listen, I would love to talk to this that trans woman and be like, "Tell me about your experience I'll, with speculum." I'll check you. Come on, let me. I know what they <laughs> do. Come on, let's go. Let me show you how this don't work. Scoot more this way. Come, come scoot first. down. <laughs> Scoot down. Yo, uh, trying to get an IUD is the most painful thing I've oh heard. Oh, my God, it's the absolute worst. They clip and your I, cervix. With a thing that has prongs. <laughs> yes. This is why I don't have an IUD. It's like a fishing Because I'll kick them. I'll kick them. <laughs> it's actually, the, it's, it's uncomfortable, but it's not that bad. I'm, no, I'm not doing I it. I had it. We don't, we don't want to do that. We don't want to get breast exams. That's not fun. The only it's time awkward. I want my breast touched was when I'm going to put them in a nigga's mouth. Okay. That is the only time, and the doctor don't do that. He be pressing. And they talk. Hard. When was the last time you checked? <laughs> and you're I'm like, like oh, what was my tits, time my tits <laughs> under my fucking armpit. <laughs> Yo, leave we, me alone. It's uncomfortable, and a pap smear is not fun. Having to get and it's cold, and let's not forget when you're having sex, and you know, homeboy is about to slide it in. There's nice and warm. <laughs> this shit. This is lube is cold. Cold is all get out, get out the and it's not even as slippery and as the, regular lube. <laughs> it's like medical grade and the medium and the, slip lube, <laughs> and the metal is so cold. It so is. They took it out the freezer. I oh, said, my doctor uses plastic. You could have at least half a job breath on it and put it in, cause damn, no. it was cold. But it's not fun. We don't want take it. That is. This is our 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 female perspective on like periods and and actually having you know natural born vagin vaginas and C sections and, and uh, all that. But one person that I really really do <laughs> like, and I don't know if it's because she's older or because we're you know we're now of the older generation kind of sort Who's of. Who's we? We? We who? We we? <laughs> La do? No, no. Yo. Me. You're, you're, I'm talking about like Gen Z, like the younger kids. Don't nowadays. make me talk. We have an older mentality, and I think it's a lot closer to Flame Monroe's, which had this to say. Let me see. Okay. Is she talking? Let me see. Oh, Gina, okay. Let me, let me talk about this, y'all. I don't know the trans woman's name, but she says that women, biological women, because I, I don't use the term cisgender. I don't use that That's dumb shit. That's another thing. Are you cis? Biological women don't own periods I mean, and don't own womanhood. 
Well, please, who, who owns it if biological women don't? I am so sick of these, my trans, some of these young trans ridiculous bitches hollering, woman, you, here is the, here is what the mockery that you are showing the world for some of you young delusional bitches that think that you a woman and you, you discarding women. Mm. It looks like on the outside looking in and from the, in the, the people I talk to that the thing that you want to become the most seems to be the thing that you hate. You want to become a woman, but you hate women. You're trying to build yourself up as a woman by discarding biological women. Mm. You wouldn't even be here if a biological woman wouldn't gave up no pussy and let a nigga bust in her. I know that's right. Here. And you are ungrateful for that? Let me tell you something. I'm not worried about what y'all... Let me t let me remind my trans sisters of this. That's old, young, new, future, past, and present. You can't outgirl a girl when you was born as a boy. One more time for the people in the back. You can't outgirl a girl when you was born a boy. You can't. It's just the natural order of things. You can be as feminine, as pretty, as soft, as beautiful, but that nigga DNA is still that nigga's DNA. <laughs> Um, I I don't want to say that you can't outdo a girl because there's some guys out here. So I think she's talking that are a thousand beautiful. percent. She's a thousand percent speaking biologically. Yeah, yeah, because I will agree with you They're a beautiful. thousand percent. There's some bitches out here that make me look bad. No, legit. Yeah. I'd be like, why can't my titties look like that? And some of them be like natural asses. Why does too. my hair not curl like your hair? Why my makeup your skin, come out like your makeup? Hurts. Your style, the yeah. way you move, the mm -hmm. way you even like. The, you have the way you get straight men. Yes. Because it happens. They don't talk to me. It happens. No, niggas want them. They want them. Yeah. And my DMs are dry. Yet. And all we got are periods. And, and you want to take that. <laughs> you can fuck 365 <laughs> days out of the year. For real. I have two good days out of the month because if I'm not bleeding, two. I'm in a bad mood. And yeah. if I'm not in a bad mood, then I, I am ovulating with a little bit of cramps. Then I, it, it's a lot you, going on. Two days? There's more than two days. I don't know. I haven't had sex in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's way more than two days. It's been over a year, okay? Jesus. Give me a minute. Um, no, but I really do appreciate <laughs> Flame because I feel like most trans that I've even met, yeah. um, this is not the voice for them. No, so but we this can... is an older generation that has common sense. No, but I even think that even today, that crazy woman's uh, rhetoric or yeah. uh, is not the majority of trans people. I hope not. I really don't think so. I feel like people that are truly trans and, and that's what they feel and that's what they were born and what they want, they mind their fucking business and they live their life as a woman or a man. And that's yeah. it. You know what I mean? They, they live their life and they... They just live, yeah. right? They might fight for certain rights. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, but they're not out here course. doing the fucking most. Like, this is dumb. Would you rather have insurance or periods? Which one? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pick, stand I feel, on all the this right. period talk, I feel like I'm going to get my period early. Not and that's me. another thing. Not Imagine me. that. Do you want that part that you can have sex and knock it up early? You can be stressed out and it can come out early or late. Then you're going to think you're pregnant and now you're stressed out thinking you're about to have a whole fucking baby. Or you can take birth control and avoid all these things. <laughs> <laughs> that's true that too I'm just saying but uh, whatever. and it gives you more than two days a month it does it does <laughs> all i will definitely say is that um i love flame monroe yeah. and that if you don't know who flame monroe is please look her up she is oh, let's get her one here I, one day. I would love to i would, I would love to get her here one day definitely was actually flame on breakfast club who said what yeah yeah that was that mm -hmm. was the clip mm -hmm. um but <laughs> anywho i would actually i would love to sit down with flame um stephanie get on it <laughs> send them emails girl I send a few emails to flame i could probably i could probably get her on but i think she, i have to figure out where she's at you should do a panel flame lunel oh you know what that I'm would still be cool. so mad i didn't go see lunel i'm so mad mm. i just didn't have a babysitter i was tired it was just a lot going on you want periods so you could have kids and not go to comedy shows god damn it do you get to go out everywhere everywhere but because i had a period I want to dropped and I, I got fertilized. A, you know what's a dink? What's a dick? Dink, dink. Oh, no. You see the, those sexual <laughs> repression offers. <laughs> Do I know where it is? I mean, I think. Dinks. Double income, no kids. I would love to be a dink. A double income. No kids. Like a person with double income? Mm -hmm. Like a, a couple. Oh, double a couple. Income, no kids. I want to be a dink. That sounds like something I could never even imagine. I don't even know what that would feel like. I don't know. I bet you it feels nice. Mm. Well, um, yeah. It does. Let's go to questions. Let's 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 move right along. Let's. We got questions. We have a question. Okay. Because um, we gotta get out of here. 
I have had the pee again. Oh, I was drinking water. I hope um, so. so starting a business with ADHD or am I the asshole? Am I the asshole? I love am I the assholes. <laughs> I go down TikTok holes for am I the asshole? All right, am I the asshole? I'm 29 years old, broke, homeless, don't have a job, and I struggle Wait, with addiction. Wait, damn. Fuck. Hold up. on. <laughs> you read too quick. Fucked up. You're 29. You're homeless. Broke, you're broke. Don't have a job and struggle it, with addiction. Is this a woman or a man? I don't know. Okay, keep going. My family has a story of mental ill. My family has a history of mental health and i got hit with the bipolar stick too and i've been officially diagnosed with clinical depression and bipolar disorder okay basically i'm about as child free as you can get because i don't want to pass on a lifetime of shitty genetics and even mm-hmm. shittier living habits um to an innocent kid okay Bendito. my friends with benefits knew this because we've had many discussions on how we'd both be unfit parents not both <laughs> you're both fucked up okay and as such, I will always make sure to wear protection. She this uses the pill. Oh, man. She uses the pill, Ooh, but hey, boy. here we are. She's pregnant, and she's ex- ex- insisting that it's mine. Wow. Shit. How are you How are you having friends with benefits? You don't have nowhere to live. You're broken. Uh, there's so much. Keep going. Bro, people got to fuck, too. I told mm-hmm. her that there's no way I'm about to be a dad. I simply can't do it. I'll find the money to pay whatever I got to pay, but pay her but i'm not about to play daddy when i never wanted this she in turn has reached out to her friend group and one by one they've turned on me and told me i am worthless i'm the am i the asshole for not wanting to step up and be a father oof well, i had a conversation with someone very recently about this ouch and this person told me that when a woman becomes pregnant it is the woman's choice to keep the baby or not it is it's the woman's choice i 100 percent agree with that I feel like if a woman decides to keep a baby, it's not because we aspire to be single mothers and we aspire to struggle and we aspire to do. It's because mm-hmm. there was a, there was there was conversations. There was a, a, a lifestyle that was promised to us in a sense that kind of made us seem like you know what this is this is probably a good person because I don't understand why you would be homeless, broke addicted to shit and this person still wants to sleep with you and possibly procreate with you so did you lie does she know that you're homeless broke mentally broken and all this other stuff i don't think that matters she, he says she's just as fucked up as he is she has a place to live does she it doesn't say where where is this email coming from it doesn't say from a metro p pcs that's being paid by the government i don't know i don't know i say but i, I will tell you my what i think Yes, you have to step up and be a father because you didn't take the necessary steps to get yourself snipped. That's free. From you the government. You can go and get yourself cut if so you can cannot do procreate. <laughs> there are ways for you to do it. A condom is not 100%. And if you are smashing this girl mm-hmm. and having sex with her or anybody else and they mm-hmm. become pregnant, you nutted in there. You did. Pretty point blank. And now you're giving her the choice to keep the baby or not. So the way it works is now you are liable to take care of this child. You might not be there as a father presently, but then you're really going to have to work because you're going to end up in jail because you had sex and weren't snipped and procreated. And now you didn't pay the child support. You're locked up. Maybe it's this is bad any way you look at it. So you're going to have to do what you got to do. Go get some medication. Get on the right track. You have a couple of months. Get your life together. Yes, you are an asshole. You were you're you're uh, uh, an honest asshole, but you're still an asshole. You're honest. You were clear, but you still didn't take any every single precaution you should have taken to not right. bring a child into this world. I 100% agree with that. I feel like if you are someone who does not want to have children, you will do what you need to do to make sure that that's not a possibility. Right. Forget what anybody else is telling you. Whatever. You know for a fact that you do not want children. You're going to do right. whatever you need to make sure that that doesn't happen. Are you an asshole for not wanting to step up and be a part of this kid's life? I don't think you're an asshole. I think you're scared. I think it's a, it's a big, scary well, thing. Well, he said here, uh, I'm, I don't want to pass on a lifetime of shitty genetics and even shittier living habits as an innocent kid. That may and not what happen. that just shows me there is that you are in a space where you don't even believe you could do better. 
Right. And that to me, words are so powerful. You just wrote down a lifetime of shitty genetics and even shittier living habits on an innocent kid. You are projecting that into your life. Yesterday alone, Mm -hmm. I brought myself into something happening when I was driving. I kept Mm -hmm. saying, I'm gonna, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, and it happened. The most I ran into someone driving, I was like, I'm about to pass by their by their neighborhood. I'm gonna see (laughs) And you're like, why would it happen? It's three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, you I have to pass by that neighborhood. I'm gonna run into them. I know I'm gonna run into them. What are the odds? Probably like this big, like so small, and bam, boom, right there in front of me. So it's like our words and our tongues are so powerful. Yeah. So maybe change your mindset from now and say, you know what? I have bipolar di- bipolar disorder. I'm going to take my medicine. I'm going to get better. I'm going to have faith that I'm going to be a good father. I'm going to read books on how to be a better father. I'm going to get myself into a homeless shelter where I can save some money and get a nice apartment, even if it's a studio to have yeah. my child in there, whatever it may be. But speak it. Speak it into existence because if you're speaking um, shitty living habits, shitty genetics, Passing down, being a bad dad, that's exactly what you're going to be. And also, like, your kid doesn't see a shitty father. Your kid, like, kids don't see that. Kids see their parent. They want, I think Mm -hmm. I I saw a thing that said, um, you you shouldn't expose your children to their fathers just because they are their fathers. What they need is a father that has the time to be there for Mm -hmm. them, that spends um, time with them, that teaches them, that nurtures them, that, like, you know, it, he has to be an active father in that positive role. If they are not that, they're not you're missing hurting. out on anything. You're hurting them, you're, if anything. Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, you never know. Like, probably this kid is what motivates you to become a better person for yourself. Like, nothing happens you never, for... Yeah, you never know. Like, I will I will 100%. Like, I saw a post recently that said a lot of people don't understand that they're still here because of their kids. No, seriously. A lot of people don't know that. It's like something so small can change your life in such a positive way. I will tell you, I have gained so much patience when it comes to how I handle everything. You're and I lose become, it soon, don't worry. She's I've, getting to that age where you're going to lose all that patience that you've no, gained. No, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Just, we're gonna, don't say that. Cause <laughs> it's, we're getting 10. Because I, I tell you all the time, you are better than me. 10, 11. But it's because you're better than you're me. You're watching on the outside, right? We have, our daughters are very similar. But it's and it's so funny. scary. It's so similar. My. <laughs> Stop saying my daughter. that. Stop saying and, that. But I watch her with hers and I'm like, ooh. That, I, I literally, it's like me watching a movie of me and Ayana back in the day. It's wild. And I I'm, feel like it's so funny how roles are reversed. Hell yeah. When you were going through that whole thing, I was like, yo, I'm watching it happen. Right. And now you're like. And she's referring to the <sighs> relationship and the. Yeah. Because I, I, I remember when I first met you, like literally the first time we met, I was just like. Hmm. And that's how I feel when you and Rylan are t- when Rylan talks back to you sometimes, I'd be like, Ooh, I know that. You you better nip it in the butt today because I they're very um they're they're brilliant they're girls. The like, same person. They're so smart. They hang and out, they, they have great times. They can manipulate like ooh. And they have very similar um issues happening right now. Like yeah. at this age, especially mm-hmm. at this age. So yeah. Uh, um I'm gonna give it to you. Give me some and I'll you get Rylan. You already went through it. You tough. You took it again. Yeah. Not it's again. like an like an infection. No, because when I mean, you get it, you get stronger. I don't want And then when it comes again, it doesn't knock you down. I don't know. I, I'll, it I'll, sits you down. I'll be able to talk to her. Don't you worry. <laughs> I, I can talk to her and show her examples. I'll be like, let me show you your friend right around this time, the consequences she <laughs> I'm had. Do, I'm going to do like those TikToks. I'm just going to, come on, let's go to, I'll drop her off. Ring the doorbell. Goodbye. And just leave. <laughs> and leave. <laughs> Nigga knocking. Be like, here. <laughs> um. Okay. Well, that's that. Just remember that everything that you put out there in the universe will happen like just be very positive with your speaking um now if you are new to the show we end the show every time with a bible verse i always say you come here for the mess stay for the message (laughs) there's always a message behind it all and i always go back to my roots which is christianity and what has what still has me here today honestly because i wouldn't be here or strong or where i am without my faith so the bible verse that i want to read today is psalm 23 which most people know one through four but i feel like today we might need it so listen but open up your ears and let it just like (laughs) come in to however it'll speak to you and it's one through four so not just one verse i have four of them the lord is my shepherd i shall lack nothing he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside quiet waters he restores my soul he guides me in paths of righteousness and for his name's sake Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This is such like a a, a Bible verse that like everybody says all the time. It's an, You have it's, to learn it. You literally, like yeah. that part where it's like, and we all hear it even in, in rap lyrics, right? Or mm-hmm. in songs, like Tattoos. I walk through the valley <laughs> of the shadow of death. And that's the thing. Sometimes we feel like right now we're walking through that valley. You're like, there is nothing I could do. You could be have diagnosed with some type of illness or an incurable STD or wow. you no, but it's every day it's happening, right? Or court papers come in or even a terminal illness or your spouse has left you or your kid has passed away. RIP to Gilly's son oh who was God. murdered recently, right? So sad. You know, kids, our children die, our parents die. We have all these unfortunate circumstances and you're like, I am walking through the valley of the shadow or de- of death. But this says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. So even on those darkest moments of myself thinking back in Jersey, being in a corner crying or back home, you know, not knowing where to go next. I remember, I don't know how you dealt with me. But there were some cries that I would let out. Oh my Last God, year. I can't forget those sounds. There were these cries that they were so painful yeah. and I knew that he was with me. That doesn't take away the pain or the fact that I felt like I was walking through the through, through death, literally. Yeah. And he says that he leads beside he leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul and he has restored my soul in a million ways. I still have so much chaos going around but i feel calm and i'm sure that has Peace. something to do with the with adderall too it's like the adderall i can really feel the <laughs> lord with my medication it even works with that like i can like pray to him and i think about a million things you know i'm like i am focused on you sir um and you shall lack nothing the beginning is the lord is my shepherd i shall lack nothing and sometimes Gosh, we also feel like we are missing things or we're lacking things and we're not whether it's money whether it's a bigger home whether it's a car whether it's certain clothes because you want to go somewhere you don't have the mm-hmm. means for food we always Always make it work that fish shall be multiplied so psalm 23 1 remember that it doesn't matter what you're going through you won't lack anything um he's with us no matter what and uh he's gonna comfort us he is i don't care what you believe in believe in something if you don't believe in anything i suggest that you, this works i do it <laughs> i pray he were he working for me let me tell you something he is working for me and it continues to work for me and as we talk about like having periods and procreating having kids and now it's so expensive to have them Jesus. one thing that i will say is that as much money as i have to spend on child care and on food and on expenses because i'm doing it alone mm-hmm. not one dollar has been missing from my account for real i have more than i need <laughs> like when i get those credit cards like i gotta pay 28 grand at once and i'm like she's not I kidding i've it. seen it <laughs> i have it and it's like wow how when yeah. where how can i sit here and pay 13 people on a payroll right like how how do i do it it's not me it's not me i remove mm-hmm. myself every single day I, sometimes i wake up and i'm just so grateful that man the lights are on that yesterday on a sunday my ac went out it is 150 degrees in florida my house went from 71 <laughs> to 89 in like 60 seconds <laughs> Water was everywhere, and the guy was like, everybody was like, we can't come until tomorrow. And I was like, I can't but sleep the through Lord the night. provided. And he sent me somebody that said, I'll come today. But it's double the price. And I looked at the account, and I said, come on. Yeah. Come on. So it's like, it's, it's crazy how it happens, but it just be obedient. Mm-hmm. Um, read the word. Pray about it. Listen to Journey Church online if you haven't. It's Pastor JJ. There's a couple of different Journey Church, but Journey Church Orlando. Listen to some of those messages. Sarah Jake Roberts, which I'll be there in September to see her for Women Evolve and change your life or believe in something. Um, that is today's episode. I'm done. I went over. Sorry, babe. Woohoo. I apologize. See you next week. <laughs>